You are tuned into Lemon Relax. What up, what up? It's your boy Tyson. Welcome back to another episode of Lemon Relax. <laughs> nah, for real. Let me relax though. So, welcome back, my Anchor family, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, wherever you listening to this. If y'all not on that Anchor the Apple Podcast or whatever podcasting platform you listen to, you need to go ahead and get up on there. I know y'all stick at having to leave the YouTube app open because, look, my trial expires in like three days. <laughs> and I'm not paying eleven ninety nine. Nope. I refuse to give them a dime until I am partnered. Sorry, can't do it. So at any rate, with that being said, though, let's go ahead and get into this Candy, Candace Owens, Cardi B situation. I'm pretty sure y'all know by now what's going on, but just in case you don't, uh, Candace went on some Republican show and had um, some thoughts about Cardi B being used as a quote unquote pawn to speak to Joe Biden to appeal to the black community, blah, 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 this, that, and the other. Cardi ended up snapping on her ass. They went back and forth on Twitter, IG live, all of that. So my first thought is this was the perfect hurricane. Candace has been coming for Cardi for a while now. Like literally she did the same thing when Cardi sat down with Bernie Sanders um, and even before then, I mean, back then in the love and hip hop days, it was more like, you know, support towards Cardi, but she did the same thing when Bernie was, um, in the race a couple years back. And, um, I, I, to my knowledge, I don't think Cardi has ever engaged with her up until this year. So I, I give, I'm gonna give Cardi that cause we all know how she get down. <laughs> But um, with that being said, she's been coming for her for a while and also a situation that happened with Cardi's sister, Hennessy, and some Trump supporters, I guess they weren't, they didn't want her and her girlfriend on the beach or whatever, so they were harassing her, carrying, carrying it up and Kevining it up. And also, Candace's book is about to drop. So, you know, homegirl used this situation as some clout. She clout chased, this is what it is. Um, and she could say she didn't, but she did. Um, but... Nonetheless, moving on from there, um, so my stance on the back and forth. First off, let's discuss my things on Candace's end. Um, first off, I want to say that politics is pandering, Candace. Any way you paint it, flip it, is it worth it? Let me work it, put the thing out, flip it, reverse it. Is your feminine for the year? Is your Yeah. Politics is pandering. What can I do to get you to identify with me so I can get your vote? Whether you're the governor, president, student president, whatever the hell. You know what I'm saying? Captain of the debate team, whatever the situation is, politics is pandering, Candace. Any way you paint it. Um, so that's number one. And also, politics is business. Cardi B makes numbers. That's why she keeps bringing up the song WAP. She has viewers and um, influence to where people will listen to her, even if she's talking about something as bland as politics. To the average American, I believe politics on anything besides the surface level is bland. You know, so she can get the youth to tune into that. I think that's a good thing. You know what I'm saying? Which Candace did say that herself. Um, granted, the way she went about it was um, everybody has their opinions on that. But I do see a lot of people, you know, the moment Cardi B speaks up is shut up, you dumb stripper. And then when she makes her stripping music, it's bitch, you can't do anything else. Why can't you stand for something? <laughs> so it's like she's damned if she do damn if she don't as far as Cardi is concerned. My next bulletin point. Sounding astute does not make you smart, just as speaking with broken English does not make you dumb. And that kind of relates to the Candace Owens Cardi B thing, in my opinion, but also just in general, that's a general statement. You know what I'm saying? Y'all have these nail techs doing y'all feet and their English is broken as fuck, but nobody would say that about them, right? All right, then. Um, and as far as people who speak with... Um, Damn, I just lost the fucking word. A big vernacular and say some dumb shit. Well, I mean, Candace. Hey, hey, girl. <laughs> just saying, just saying. Now, I, I have done a video on her before. I don't disagree with everything Candace says, but majority of what she says, it comes from a, it comes from an Uncle Tom place. It just is what the fuck it is. Um. Next up on my list is her trying to act as if her and Ben the um, Republican show that she was on, I think his name is Shapiro, were not being condescending at all to, towards Cardi. That's a reach. They was definitely shading the fuck out of that girl. Um, next up, Candace's point to Trump being all for gay marriage and Obama not being about it in his first term 
is to me kind of erroneous. I don't know where he stood on it, but I kind of feel like for one, the LGBTQ, this is just me looking from the outside, looking in, didn't really get their voice until maybe the age of social media, which is 2013, 2014. I feel like they gave them a missing voice that they um, may not have had before. And by then, Obama had two years left in the House. So to me, that's kind of how I always looked at that situation. From a minute standpoint, I don't know the ins and outs, but that's what I kind of perceived as it. I just didn't think it was on the rise like that in 2008. I think people were still more so hush-hush about their shit back then. Correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but that's how I perceived it. Um, And also, when you're going to judge, when you're going to judge Obama... You, you have to put things into context because when you're a Democrat and you have a house full of majority Republicans, you're not going to get a lot of shit done. It, you know what I'm saying? There are two different parties with very different opposing views. And yeah, you have some people who kind of meet in the middle on both sides, but you have a lot of people who are extreme as well. Um, now, how many extremists versus middle people were in the house back when Obama was in? You know, maybe that's necessary for the context as well. But I think that's important to put in context. Um, and that's that would be, I would say, the same thing if you had Trump in office and you had a majority Democratic House. You know what I'm saying? He wouldn't be able to get much done either because their views are different. With that being said, though, next point. Again, Candace, you are clout chasing. Let's just call a spade a spade. <laughs> um, next comment. To her comment about Cardi lying about the whole bleach situation. That was not a lie. And um, while Trump did not say drink bleach, Trump is the president. You, regardless of how we feel about him, there's a certain type of stature that comes with that. So him even mildly suggesting on live television that drinking bleach may help cure the coronavirus or there may be something in the bleach that can help it. I understood on a scientific level where he was coming from but that's a question he should have asked the research team when the tv was off when the cameras were off that's something you ask them when it's off you don't say that shit out loud (laughs) because lo and behold some people went and took that little piece ran with it and they ass dead you know what i'm saying and as far as that's concerned i mean i'm not happy that nobody died but that's natural selection because i know my my black ass was not finna drink no damn bleach i just know that much and that's all i can say um next bulletin point her views on the Democratic Party. Um, my thing with Candace was when she first came out, she was a Democrat. And from what I've gathered, it seems like it was more money in being a Republican. So in, in, in essence, even though we'll get into what Cardi said, um, she wasn't wrong about her being a puppet for the white man. I'm just going to be honest. Um, we'll, we will touch back up on that. Um, next up, her lies about cops dying from people they look like. Now, I'm not saying that not all co- are all cops live in the areas where they police, but I can say speaking from experience, um, those of y'all who've been following me for a while, you know I do Uber, I also do Grubhub. I drive around my city a, a good bit. And um, suburbs, not a lot of cops there. And if they are, they don't usually work in that county so i've seen this firsthand same thing when you go to the hoods it's not the same county cars that are there for that particular county so that's not true in fact that's one of people's biggest concerns um but she gets a lot of information quote unquote information (laughs) wrong when it comes to police this is the same woman who doesn't believe police brutality is a thing um next bullet bulletin point um my biggest issue with candace on politics is she can never admit like the democrats are responsible for everything republicans didn't do shit if if you ask her they have not done shit wrong and for her to paint the democrats as oh joe biden enslaved y'all and the democrats had y'all enslaved at one point if i'm not mistaken the democrats and the republics were switched so the parties were switched at one point um but At any rate, regardless of that situation, we're not living in America. This whole country is built off of the uplifting of one dominant society and keeping the foots on the necks of of the minorities. So neither party has done anything miraculous for black people. Let's just keep that all the way fucking 100. Um, 
people and also my next bulletin point people have valid reasons not to like trump you know she talks about you were told to hate him no um i watched him throw paper towels at puerto ricans um i watched him call my diasporic brethren and brethren and sisters country shitholes we saw this we have seen this man show his ass time and time again and as cardi pointed out even with this whole pandemic thing he had a chance to appear at least the bit the smallest bit humanistic in his approach and still didn't do it still chose to show his ass so no people have plenty of valid reasons not to like trump just as they have plenty of valid reasons not to like joe biden um, now I will say though, how's that for WAP? That was cute, Candy. It was cute. It was cute. <laughs> that was funny. I can appreciate shade. <laughs> Good shade. But at any rate, um, so now I want to go back on, or go to my stance on the back and forth as far as Cardi is concerned. Now, as far as the Joe Biden interview, I don't think it was as bad as everybody was making it to seem. Um, I get the pandering aspect, but like I said, politics is business. You're going to go with the big fish. It's the same thing, not the same thing exactly, but it's the same thing with the whole WAP video. Okay, y'all were mad Kylie Jenner was in it? Guess what? Kylie Jenner put together with Megan Cardi and um, all those other girls, she still has more Instagram followers than them on Instagram alone. So it's a business move. You know, they may not even personally, well, I mean, Megan was hanging out with her, but they may not even personally like Kylie. Some people have genuine friendships. Some people have business relationships. Some people are a good look. You know what I'm saying? People fake relationships in Hollywood for goddamn sakes. So it was a smart thing to have Kylie in the video. It was going to get people talking, regardless if you liked it or not. Um, same thing with this whole Cardi B situation. Cardi B sitting down with Joe Biden, it's going to get people talking. And she already did this with Bernie Sanders. So I don't know where all the, you know, whoa was at. I don't know if y'all are still kind of hype off a of WAP or what. But nonetheless, um, so the first bullet in the point, first off, I expect Cardi to behave like Cardi does. Cardi is hood as hell. She speaks with broken English, half-ass grammar and all. And that's what Cardi does. She hasn't changed in the three, four years that we've known her. I've known her since 26, 2015, 2016, somewhere around there, her Instagram days. She talks the same as those fucking videos. She's cleaned it up, polished it a little bit. But still, it's still the same Cardi we know. It's still the same Cardi at Harper's Bazaar. So I, I don't expect her. I expect her to, which I will, I will give Candace that. She did a good, oh, there we go. That was better. Um, but yeah, I expect her to do all that shit. You know what I'm saying? I expect her to come up there with the long nails. Do all that shit. I expect that. That's what Cardi does. I don't expect her to change herself. And too often we tell celebrities, you know, stay real. And then when they give us a real we don't like, it's all of a sudden a problem. Now, I understand saying that with Cardi. There's some respectability politics that people will play into that. But nonetheless, the gist of it is do what you're going to do at the end of the day. Because people is going to like it or they're going to hate it. And it is what it is. Um, and that would be my best advice to Cardi B. Um, next bulletin point, I agree mostly with what a lot of Cardi said on surface level. I would have to do my own research. You know what I'm saying? I'm more well-versed in black politics than I am in political politics. So I would have to um, research a lot of what she said. But like I said, I think on the surface level, it was decent. I um, My next bulletin point, I don't think the interview was as bad as people are making out to be. I think sitting with multiple people on the political grounds, as well as influencers, is helpful. Politics is business and Cardi B does numbers. It's so, I mean, it is what it is. Now to Candace's point, they could sit with some black Democrats who are actually working on the political grounds. That's cool. But I don't think Cardi should be excluded from that conversation because she's not a politician. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's why I have such a big problem with respectability politics is because at the end of the day, most people, they don't, you know, most people are not Cardi B, you know what I'm saying? Regardless of if she's ghetto ratchet or whatever to you, they don't show their full selves. You know what I'm saying? They don't even show 50% of their full selves. They show you what you want to see. You know, a lot of people function in a social media type of mindset. Um, but nonetheless, we can talk about that on another episode. Um, my next bulletin point, she also did ask about not having excruciatingly high taxes for free college and Medicare. And Biden answered that. So Candace was wrong there because she did say that anybody with sense would know that in, in, able to have, in order to have free college and Medicare, you would have to have excruciatingly high taxes. And Cardi specifically asked, how can we do that without having those high taxes? 
Um, so my next bulletin point, um, Cardi's point to calling SEE19 the Chinese virus. Y'all are smart, figure it out. I don't got time to play with you YouTube or Susan Wajinski, whatever her name is. <laughs> so um, th- another reason why that's a valid reason people ain't fucking with Trump. You know what I'm saying? He has definitely shown his ass throughout this thing. And on top of that, he already knew about it. He already knew about it before we found out, before it hit mainstream. I, I knew about it from Love VT. I knew about it since uh, February. And, my, and I think I had it in December. Um, next bulletin point. Um, I don't think we can ignore the air around certain Trump supporters. Um, I think we all are apparent as black people and people of color that that man, since he sat in that chair, there's a certain subset of people in the dominant society, keywords, that have no shame anymore about the bigotry and racism that they spew. And that's all I'm going to say. Um, now, as far as Cardi saying the whole, I don't know what black man hurt you, um, comment, she was giving me ho tip. Cardi, uh-uh, I, I, I ain't, I ain't, don't, don't, don't be like Ashy YouTube. Don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. And also, as far as Cardi is concerned, I feel like she should have strayed away from bringing up marital partners, being that Offset is a serial cheater. You know what I'm saying? And also, it doesn't help that, you know, it's been, news is broke today um Tuesday that um she's getting a divorce from offset Tuesday September 15th um now I don't know if they just all of a sudden the last two days decided to get a divorce or if they've been speaking about this for weeks who knows I'm not in their bedroom um prayers go out to them and prayers go out to culture that they can work this out in the best way possible um that name is growing on me it's really cute especially the way that they changed the spelling y'all let me know down below y'all like the name culture Mm, I don't know maybe I'm ratchet too now nah, I know I'm ratchet, but you know, maybe I'm maybe I'm that ratchet now. <laughs> um, I just think it's unique without being too extra. Tyranica, ain't no Tyranica, ain't no, you know, Charicelia, ain't nothing too too extra. Um, but at any rate, let me relax for one of y'all be like, that's my name. Let me stop. <laughs> let me relax, exactly. So at any rate, I feel like she should have strayed away from bringing up marital partners. Now, this is probably the most political episode that I've done. As far as like politics, politics, but I even don't like touching on certain politics in other areas too. I just feel like people get too emotional. They can't debate things out. They don't want to try to see the other person's side, especially in political politics. But just in general, you know what I'm saying? I think people kind of act like that anyways. They kind of have a binary mindset. It's either this way or that way. There's never a gray area. People can't do bad things for good reasons or good things for bad reasons. And people who think like that, I just, I can't center myself around that. You know what I'm saying? I need people who can think outside the box. And for that reason, I don't really like discussing politics on this channel other than black politics. But actual politics, I do not. As far as black people are concerned this year, vote for the lesser of two evils. Whoever you view as the lesser of two evils, go for it. If you're not going to vote, boom. Okay. We don't need to hear a soliloquy and a paragraph and a haiku about why you're not going to do it. Move in silence. But um, I do not have these conversations with anybody outside of my initial circle. I just feel it's best that way. All right. So here's the fun part. I am going to now choose how I am going to identify Cardi B on my channel. So first off, I will start with how I first saw her. Back on Instagram with the fucked up teeth. Before Loving Hip Hop, I saw a light-skinned black girl. I didn't know she was Hispanic until she spoke Spanish. And after that, I still, I didn't know the term Afro-Latina, but I just kind of assumed, okay, she's a black person who speaks Spanish. So on my channel, what I've stated her as in the past, from my knowledge, I did go back a few Cardi videos. I've always discussed more surface stuff with her, like the whole Nikki Cardi thing when she won the Grammy Um, situations like that. I never really went into her race to my knowledge, like really deeply. Um, now I did, I want to go into this phone call that I had with a friend, um, to note how close we are. Um, this phone call was four hours long. Their newest son is my godson. So we are really close. Um, she is Haitian American. It's a friend of mine. She's Haitian American, but she is Haitian raised like cultures. Um, her kids are, excluding my godson her kids are five and seven and they know about 250 words of haitian creole they still have haitian thanksgiving Ooh, that shit is so good 
I'm probably going to have to go down there in November. But at any rate, excuse me, sorry. Very, you know, very Haitian, that's Haitian household, basically. And we have a lot of conversations. Um, Cardi did come up as far as also a YouTuber on here that we were talking about. And we've talked about this conversation before. Um, African-American phenotypes and all that. But we'll get into that. But Cardi came up and... um, we also talk about um, diasporic tensions in between um, African Americans and other Black people, um, and there's you know accountability on both ends. I've talked to her about how some Black people feel like foreigners, Black foreigners, look down on Black Americans, and um, one of the things that she brought up, we've talked about that I think in the past though. But at any rate, one of the things that she brought up on this particular last phone call that she said is irritating with her is African Americans like to gatekeep Blackness. And it's not just African-American blackness, it's blackness, period. Like, they will look at a person straight from the motherland and tell them they're not black. Uh, Now, I don't know if that reason is because they're not American black and we just so used to saying black in America that we kind of just attach it to America. I don't know. But her thing is, you have the right to say if somebody, you can distinguish blackness as far as American and non-American, but as far as just blackness alone, even based on phenotype, and for a minute, I was following a YouTuber who was saying this, um, but she um, was quick to point out that, you know, for one, we are the most mixed part of the diaspora. So how are the most melodic people, you know what I'm saying? She wasn't trying to be offensive, and she didn't say that. I'm saying that. Um, cause I did call us the tragic mulattoes, truly the tragic mulattoes. But she was like, how are the most mulattic people going to divvy out who's black and who's not basically and she was saying that in order to get a proper phenotype because there is a specific youtuber on here who um, talks about black phenotypes and she said in order to get that african-americans specifically would have to um have their own civilization off on i guess like an island or whatever on their own untouched from the rest of the world just african-americans products of two african-american parents not mixed people we can talk about mixed people we talk about black people straight up black um they would have to go on an island cultivate do all that on their own for 100 200 years and then we would have an african-american phenotype up until then we can't really define what that is and as far as um what we were talking about with this particular youtuber she was like, you really can't say black features are just big and round either because look at Issa Rae. You know, that girl is Senegalese up and down, but you're not going to tell her she's not black because her features aren't big. So she was like, you can't really paint it with that broad of a brush either. But at any rate, that was just a little conversation we had. Um, so she stated that that's one issue um, that she feels, and she did relate that also, relate that also to the Cardi B situation, and, um, she's kind of where I'm at with it, too, you know what I'm saying, um, Cardi B is not saying she is African-American black, she said that she is Dominican and Trinidadian, so that is up to the black Dominicans and Trinidadians if they want to own her or not, that's not my problem, I look at that as the same way with the whole rapper Miss Bulato situation, you know, black people were saying her name, some some people were saying that her name is offensive. And as far as black people being in that conversation, mulatto means mixed people. It's a derogatory term for mixed people. So whose fight is that? Black people's or mixed people's? That's not our fight. It's not my fight. So if mixed people are that offended, Tracy Ellis Ross can pull her to the side and say, uh, baby, let's change that name. You a great rapper, but let's change that name. If they don't want to do that, they ain't got shit to do with me. That's not my fight. Um, allies, yes, but am I going to throw myself in the middle of your battle that has nothing to do with me? No. So with that being said, um, that's kind of how I view the Cardi situation. Um, as far as that is concerned, the gatekeeping part of the blackness. Um, now I do realize Cardi has teetered the line a little bit, but let's keep it real. If you look up these videos of these Afro Latinas, a lot of them are having problems even identifying what they are because you have those black people who are so super inclusive, like, yeah, you can dance a little bit. Oh yeah, white boy or white girl, you can twerk. White boy, you can break dance, come to the cookout. So you have those black people who will be like, yeah, you Afro Latin, come on, you black like us. And then you have black people who are like, nah, we're not fucking with that. You know, nah, we good. We didn't seen the Gina Rodriguez's and the um, Zoe Zaldana's. We good, we good. 
Um, so they kind of just feel like they're stuck in a rock in a hard place. And then also Afro Latin, although the concept of it is not new, I do think the name, at least like I, I didn't know about it until I'm Arla Negra. You know what I'm saying? I'll be honest. I knew there were black Hispanic people and the way I knew it was Pornhub. <laughs> that's, that's really it. I would watch Brazilian porn and I'd be like, this motherfucker blacker than me. <laughs> so I, that's how I found out And I still didn't have a name to put to it I was just like okay they're black Brazilians Okay and moved on about it Nobody taught me about that So um I think they're having problems Kind of claiming How how to identify their own selves You know what I'm saying Cardi very, very may well be going through that too And also Let's just be honest you know Whether you consider the girl smart or dumb or whatever there, she does have a lack of proper articulation. You know what I'm saying, and I'm not, and I'm not gonna like, like, act like I'm the most astute person either. You know, my grammar throughout this podcast has probably been iffy, <laughs> um, and that's okay because I'm chilling with y'all. I'm talking with y'all. Y'all my best friends, so we could <laughs> fuck that grammar, <laughs> fuck that. Let me relax. But at any rate, um, I think that plays a part too, especially if we're gonna hold her to this, you know, quote unquote hood rat, quote unquote illiterate dumb girl. You know what I'm saying, uh, trove. Well, then you can't expect her to, you know, say I'm in an intercultural relationship instead of interracial or interracial. I don't expect that from her. You know what I'm saying? Um, if that's the thing, if that's the standard we're holding her to, you know what I'm saying? Then treat her as that accordingly. You know, she's not going to say everything right. Um, that's not to excuse everything she's done. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I also think culture is another aspect of it. You know, her looking at that little black girl and saying, I'm raising a black girl. You know what I'm saying? This is important. Not to say that she's never been involved in politics before and speaking up for black people and people of color before. But I think that does have something to do with it as well. And yes, I do view culture as black. I view her, even if you want to say Cardi B is mixed. Okay. Barack's kids are mixed. Barack Obama is Half and half, and Michelle is full black. Those kids are still 75% black. So even if you don't want to say Cardi is mixed, culture is still a black child to me. They have the same hair texture, all that. Well, I don't know about the same hair texture. Cardi's hair might be a little kinkier than hers. Um, but with baby's hair, I think sometimes they kind of, um, the texture might change, but who knows. But at any rate, um, I also feel like there's kind of a double standard. I'm not going to go too long on it because I know this podcast is already long enough. But I don't see the same energy for Nikki and Kamala. I d well, actually, Kamala, I do see it, but it's for different reasons. It's because, you know, black people, especially black men, they consider her a quote-unquote cop, and also she's with a white man. So there's, ex ex um, there's um, other opinions aside from just trying to keep her out of blackness that are there. But as far as Nikki is concerned, Cardi and Nikki are both half Trinidadian. And, I mean, if you put Cardi and Nikki in the same room and stand back, they could be cousins, depending on who's who you asking, you know, if you don't got 20-20 eyesight. Like, they look similar to me in certain pictures. So, you know what I'm saying? I, I, don't, I don't see this pushback to keep Nikki out of blackness. And Nikki kind of does that her, on her own. You know, every other song is mixed with China. You know what I'm saying? And no, I'm not just talking about the Rake It Up verse. But um, every other song, every other verse, at least once a year, she got to let us know what she mixed with and all this other shit. You know what I'm saying? Meanwhile, she telling y'all that you nappy-headed hoes need a permeator. And that's no hate. I'm just saying. You know what I'm saying? But then when it's time for her to get in the problem, then she's, I'm black. I'm black. You know what I'm saying? So I don't see that same energy being held up for her. And they both, if we're going to say Cardi is exotic, Nikki is just exotic looking to me as well. You know what I'm saying? Look at that nose. That's not a, that's not, you know what I'm saying? You don't see that on your unambiguous average black woman. Um, the whole features really, you know what I'm saying? Up and down. That's West Indian Trinidadian all day long. But nonetheless, um, I also feel like respectability politics are another reason why we may not hold Cardi and Nikki in the same resort, uh, resolve in that way, but also why we hold Cardi B so much you know what i'm saying as far as you know she's a stripper she's loud she's boisterous <clears throat> she speaks her mind even though we swear up and down we want a real person but when we get the real that we don't like how it looks then all of a sudden it's a problem but um yeah nonetheless um i think respectability politics plays a part 
and why black people are hesitant to claim her. Excuse me. And also colorism. Now, I understand colorism is usually, excuse me, the mistreatment of darker skinned people. But if you look up the definition, it says usually. It's not an always thing. So, and I'm not saying reverse colorism. I'm just saying colorism, period. It's the treatment of somebody based upon their skin color. Sometimes it's in favoritism of light, light skin. Sometimes it's against light skin. But even in this case, Cardi would be the darker skin person because the person I'm about to bring up is Sofia Vergara. You know, when it comes to Sofia Vergara, I don't see people pushing her to speak right. You know what I'm saying? To talk correctly. Speak correctly. I don't see people pushing her to do that. Now, I haven't watched her interviews. So maybe she's just playing into that, you know, Latina stereotype. Um, but when I see her on Modern Family, you know, she's that, you know, not to burst any feathers, but, or, you know, not burst any feathers, but y'all know what I'm saying. Not to piss anybody off, but she's that stereotypical Latina woman, you know, who kind of drags out her words, doesn't really speak correctly. You know what I'm saying? I don't see her getting the same amount of scrutiny as Cardi B. And in that case, Cardi B is the darker skinned person, if you want to be technical. So I don't, you know what I'm saying? I, I think there's so many elements that go into why black people don't want to claim Cardi B. But as far as this being an African-American problem, to me, it's just not. Feel free to disagree with me. But as far as I'm concerned, I will either be addressing Cardi B as moving forward, as Trinidadian and Dominican. Or if I don't feel like saying all them damn syllables, she's going to be black. It is what it is. <clears throat> so with that being said, thank y'all for making it through with me. My throat is itching like hell. It's 1 a.m. I'm finna go catch up on Scandal. <laughs> y'all let me know what y'all think down below. Um, How do y'all identify Cardi B? How did y'all feel about Candace Owens versus Cardi B? And um, yeah, y'all let me know down below. How do y'all feel about the divorce? <clears throat> And um, I, I'm wishing them, you know what I'm saying, that they can work it out, regardless of everything else. There's still a family broken up. And um, Candace Owens, you, you was the Uncle Tom, but still, wish her luck on her pregnancy. I don't want nothing to happen to her. And, um, yeah, that's all I got to say. Y'all let me know down below how y'all feel. Reach out to me on social media, and we will be back on the next episode. Peace.